Hi, my name is Lara and welcome to my channel, Inner Goddess Guidance. I created this channel um, for people who are doing the work of self-healing on their path to self-mastery. I am a personal coach and I was a teacher for many, many years. And combining those two things with my own personal healing experience, I have stepped into Mission as a Divine Feminine to share some of the tips and tools um, that you can use on your journey. I believe that every single person's healing experience is their own and in their own hands. Um, we can certainly consult people and um, we should do that as we are called to do. But um, what makes something truly effective in our healing is our own work. So in this channel, I combine some ideas, affirmations, journaling, and gratitude daily or when you feel called to do so because those three things are really consistently shown to assist people in doing deep work so this isn't superficial this is pretty deep and hopefully <laughs> those things will help you so that's why i created the channel i'm also working with a group of people on facebook now to create oracle cards and that process is even deeper. I do dedicated videos um, on topics related to the Oracle cards. I decided not to share them on the YouTube channel. Um, I actually attempted, well, I've done a few, and then I attempted last night to um, share one on inner child healing that just didn't resonate with enough people on YouTube. So. I decided to go ahead and make that unlisted and share it just with the group. Um, if you are interested in specific topics, you can just list them in the comments section and I will address those topics specifically. I think that the inner child video was um, uh, tr too triggering and um, in, in reassessing um, that message for, you know, for a greater audience, I decided that um, maybe it was a little too much. So um, <clears throat> took that one down. So um, let's call in spirit. And did I mention that there's a link in the comment section for the Facebook group? Yeah, there is. So if you want to join, just click the link, ask to join, and I will let you in. It's fabulous, by the way. There's amazing women in there who are gifted and creative and supportive and the healing that's happening there is truly remarkable um, but that is a deeper process so anyway let's call in spirits and um, we'll pull a divine feminine oracle card today from the Megan Waterston deck and then we will pull um, a Carolyn Carolyn Mace from the Wisdom for Healing cards. And then we'll combine those two to see if we can come up with an affirmation. And yeah, so we're gonna call in spirit now. Spirit of the universe of love and light, please be with us in this time and space as we focus our collective intention on gaining wisdom and guidance for our journey toward healing and self-mastery. We ask for open hearts and minds to receive the messages for our highest and best good in the service of healthy love in all forms with deep gratitude. Thank you. Spirit, please give us one Divine Feminine Oracle card message for the day please it can guide us give us advice and energy a message oh that was a lot the one that came up facing up is white buffalo calf woman the prophetess of the sacred way my heart is a compass the path of love is true abundance beautiful card
Now these are not alphabetical, so it takes me a minute to locate. Luckily that's a long one, so yep, easy, 154. White Buffalo Calf Woman represents the sacred vision that gives us hope that all will be provided for us. San We, or White Buffalo Calf Woman, is the primary cultural prophet of the Lakota religion. Buffalo are considered sacred to the Plains people and are seen as messengers from the ancestors. A Lakota legend says that two young scouts went in search of food during a famine. They saw a stunningly beautiful woman appear before them in a radiant white light. The first scout approached her with unholy intentions, and the second scout watched as the first man turned to bones the instant he tried to touch her. She was clearly Lilawakan, very holy. Thankfully, he knew this. She asked him to approach her because she could see into his heart and knew his intentions were good. She told him to prepare for her arrival in the village. He went back and gathered everyone together. She appeared before them and taught them the seven sacred rites of the Lakota people including the sacred pipe ceremony that binds men and women together in a circle of love and mutual respect. When your soul selects her card, white buffalo calf woman is a sacred reminder that we don't have to struggle to receive all that we've desired when we join our heart's longing with action we find that there's a sacred way to move through the world. This sacred way is a path of steady, quiet alignment between the heart's intention and our every step. White Buffalo Calf Woman is an omen of hope that all will be provided for us when we approach each situation with love. What she wants us to focus on is the intention behind an action because that changes the outcome. She's a sacred prophetic sign that we can receive what we need without fighting for it or trying to secure it through manipulation. When prayer joins right action, when we move from that intention of creating only more love, then abundance is inevitable. And when we seek not just for ourselves, but also for the benefit of our loved ones and community, our needs are divinely met. The most sacred path is the one abundant with love. Soul Voice Meditation. What is my intention for the work I am currently doing? So, you know, like when, when I start the reading and I do the invocation, there's an intention there. We set the intention to hear a message that can serve our highest and best good, that will help us with our healing. Um, I often think when two choices are in front of me, you probably do something similar, um, which is the path of love, if I have an option. And sometimes, especially in the past several months, I've actually been able to catch myself ahead of time in an interaction with somebody and ask myself prior to responding, what, are, what is my intention with this information, with this response? Is it manipulation or is it the path of love? It's really normal, I think, for us, especially unconsciously, um, 
you know, as we sort of awaken to this mission and this journey and try to align our daily actions with unconditional love and spreading love and being an agent of love, we're so conditioned that especially when we're having an interaction with another person and we're responding to a, a situation, especially when it's something that triggers us, it can be super easy to fall back on, on old patterns of reactions, especially when there's parts of ourselves that are not yet healed. You know, we might be reacting from that inner child throwing a fit or, you know, something that was not healed in us that's triggered in that moment. And to slow down enough to be mindful and ask yourself, what are my true intentions here? And once the answer for those intentions becomes clear, is that aligned with love? Is that continuing me on that course that my heart compass is leading me toward? Or is that going to lead me away from it? Um, so I think this is really a, a fabulous card to come out today in terms of um, becoming aware of your intentions, especially in regards to, you know, when you're responding to a situation, um, just to take a minute, it only takes seconds really to just pause and ask yourself, wait, I know I'm about to respond this way. What are my intentions with that response? Am I hoping to, to, you know, trigger something else? Like if I respond this way, then that person will respond this way. And I know that. So I'm going to respond, right? Are you manipulating or are you pure of intention? And if we can, um, the more we can be sort of purely aligned with good intentions and on the path of love. And then I think too, to like recognize when we haven't been and maybe apologize for that if it requires an apology or at least like self reflection of saying, yeah, you know, I really, I think I had an ulterior motives with that. Yeah. So thank you spirit. That was excellent. Um, so now from the wisdom for healing cards by Carolyn Mace. Spirit, please give us one wisdom for healing cards, perhaps something to go along with the, the intention card, white buffalo calf woman. Okay. Oh, again. Well, there's two. Okay. So the two cards are see the good in everything and let go of resentment. So this one, see the good in everything. Today's lesson, this is a day for optimism only. No matter what comes your way, your task is to see only the favorable attributes in it. Your goal, to practice the power of positive thinking. What a great lesson for the day. So a good affirmation for this one is, I see the positive in every situation. Sometimes that's challenging. Sometimes the positive is that we know what we don't want, right? Like, I know that I don't want to act that way or I don't want to be like that. Um, and I think that's okay. Or understanding that it's a lesson. I never want to repeat that behavior. <laughs> I never want that to happen again. So today is a day for optimism, seeing the good. I choose to see the good. There's good in everything, right? At least a little tiny speck. That's what the whole yin-yang symbol is, right? There's a little bit of light in the darkness, and there's a little bit of dark in the light. So see the good. Choose to see the light. And then let go of resentment. Acknowledge one resentful feeling you need to release and keep in mind that all types of resentment are 
poison and harm the healing process. Your goal to become mindful of your reasons for staying angry and to begin letting go of negative feelings by the end of the day. I um, love thinking about that as toxic. I did a whole video with them. I got a message from Spirit one night, had to wake up in the middle of the night and do a video all about toxicity. We do a lot of things and, and hold on to things that are toxic and resentment, anger, that's part of it. And I know that sometimes we're justified in feeling angry and anger isn't always bad. There are healthy ways to process it and deal with it. But if you hold on to it and you can't let it go, the person who is hurt most is you. That is like poison. And if somebody handed you a cup of poison and said, here, drink, you'd be like, no, I'm not going to drink that poison. Well, that's what essentially resentment and hate is. It's a cup of poison. And if we drink it, it, it stays in our body and causes us toxicity. So... Um, and that's energetically what we do when we go through um, maybe a traumatic moment with somebody. Somebody deceives us or betrays us or lets us down in some way. Um, you know, if we don't forgive and stop resenting them, move out of that victim mode, right? The person who's most harmed by that is ourselves. So today's lesson I can release resentment. Today I choose to release resentment. I let go of negative feelings. So far, um, some good affirmations. I choose the path of love. I become clear on my intentions and align myself with love. I choose to see the positive in life. I choose to find something positive in every situation today. I allow myself to release resentment. I let go of negative feelings. So that's like several different options for affirmations, whichever one resonates with you. I'd write it down in your journal. Um, one way to work with affirmations is not just something that you, you know, repeat or write down once, but really over the course of the day, go back to it. If it's something really, really simple, like I choose to release resentment, then throughout the day, you just keep coming back to that. I choose to release resentment. And just saying that might remind you of some resentment you're holding that you can release, or I choose to see the positive in all things. And again, um, the, the power in the affirmation is in the writing of it and in the speaking of it. You can also obviously go and just listen to affirmations. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, people listen to them as they're going to sleep at night, in fact. Um, and I think that's good too. I think that it's even more powerful if it's your affirmation that you make, you own it, and you speak it with your own voice throughout the day. And then don't forget to come back at the end of the day, reflect on your day in your journal, and um, come up with one or two or five. I think the secret magic number I saw um, quoted in a, in a study, a scientific study, was five gratitudes a day. And that those people who consistently over time, and I think they tracked them for 60 days, did five gratitudes a day, were showed significant improvement in their happiness overall so it's really good to let your brain go to bed on that rather than you know like a lot of us do thinking about all the bad things that happened that day and what we should have done differently and how we didn't get things accomplished let that stuff go and really think through the day that passed and the things you were truly truly grateful for so um yeah, that's it. That's the um, messages for the day and some tips to go along with them. I hope that you have a beautiful, wonderful Sunday. I know I'm posting this a little late, um, but I was having a beautiful meditation this morning, so <laughs> I stayed in that state for quite some time. Happy healing to you.
Thank you for being here. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you. Bye.